Okay, so what are the critical points of our sine and cosine graph? Now, when we're talking about critical points, what we're interested in, under in learning, just drop my marker, what we're interested in learning is the x-intercepts, the minimum and the maximum of our graph. Now, remember the sine and cosine graph go on and on and on forever. So what we're going to do is we're just going to look at our initial period and determine where do we have, um, where do we have our critical points, our x-intercepts, and our minimum and maximum points. Now remember, this is going to change when we have a transformation. Um, and it's also going to keep on repeating itself over and over. But it's important for us to at least understand in the initial period of the parent graph where we have our critical points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of sketch the sine graph and the cosine graph, and so we can see these values. And again, I'm just going to sketch our initial period. So remember, our initial period is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. 0, 2 pi. Okay, and, and noticing in the, in the parent graph, we only go up as high as 1 and to negative 1. So therefore, when sketching my graph, I'm going to look at my initial period. For the sine graph, it goes immediately up to my maximum, down to my x-intercept, down to the minimum, and then up back over to 2 pi. For the cosine graph, it's going to start at my 1, my max point, goes down to 0, um, it goes down to 0 then down to its minimum, up to its intercept, and then back up to its maximum point again. So when dealing with our critical points, we have our maximum point here, we have an x-intercept at 0, another x-intercept at pi, and another x-intercept at 2 pi. When dealing with in the cosine graph, we have a maximum at 0, a x-intercept at pi halves, a minimum at pi, x-intercept at 3 pi over 2, and then our maximum value at 2 pi. Now what's really important about understanding the critical points is, you know, there's always going to be transformations and all this kind of stuff going on. And how can you always understand or know where exactly your critical points are going to be? Because once you get into transformations, that's going to start affecting the graph, right? Your graph might be you know, condensed, or it might be stretched, or it might be shifted up or down. So how is that going to affect you know, where we're going to have our critical points? Well, the one thing I want you to notice is the distance between each one of these critical points is the same, right? Each one of these distances is exactly the same. And you can see in my graph, in an initial period of a sine and cosine graph, each one of these sections is broken up into four different parts. So when I want to determine what the distance between each critical point or where my critical points are going to do, what I write down is I take, I take my period, whatever, for e whatever my problem is, for whatever I've found out for the period, and I divide it by four. And that's a lot of times in my videos what I call our critical points. And what that is, is I find the value of the period, which in sine and cosine is 2 pi divided by p equals my period. And so I take 2 pi divided by b, lowercase b I will use, and whatever that value is, I divide that by 4. So in the sine and cosine graph, in the, in the parent graph, my period is 2 pi divided by 4, which equals pi halves. And what you guys can notice is the distance between each critical point is pi halves. So that's very important. No matter what your transformation is, if you can figure out what the period is, then divide it by 4, and now you've got the distance between each critical point. So therefore, when you want to be able to find out when the next maximum or when the next intercept is, you can use this to help plot your graphs. So ladies and gentlemen, that's the critical points of the sine and cosine graph. Thanks.